ുള്ള ഗുണ ഉള്ള പൊരുൾ ഉള്ള അര ഉള്ളത്തെ ഉള്ളത ഉള്ളം എനും ഉള്ള പൊരുൾ ഉള്ളൽ എവൻ ഉള്ളത്തെ ഉള്ളപടി ും <coughs> which comes under the segment of viveka the whole work is divided into viveka vichara and anubhava in in one way of looking that is by sri lakshman sharma sir viveka vichara and anubhava we are in the viveka <coughs> the verse number 16 now this vanishing of first person to recall it can happen by enquiring into the contents of what that first person has <coughs> grabbed and identified with as this is me when those contents are enquired and eliminated then the first person vanishes and the pure consciousness or the self alone remains now that is the connection later in the vichara verses we will be seeing the other practice of majjata also that is diving deep but for now it is enough that the first person vanishes if we enquire into the truth of the identity with the contents that these are i or those could be i and the i grasping those things is enquired into and the consciousness that is freed understands that the second person and third person are also unreal verse number 15 recalling nigalvine patri இறப்பெதிர்வு நிற்ப நிகழ்கால் அவையும் நிகழ்வே நிகழ் ஒன்றே இன்றுண்மை தேடாது இறப்பெதிர்வு தேர உணர் ஒன்றின்றி எண்ண உணர் இன்றுண்மை தேராது இறப்பெதிர்வு தேர உணல் சோ வி டிஸ்கவர்ட் இன் தட் வர்ஸ் ஹவு தி பாஸ்ட் பிரசன்ட் அண்ட் ஃபியூச்சர் ஆர் ஆக்சுவலி இன் தி mind and <clears throat> the present does not mean that just whatever is found as existent in the present is accepted as the truth indru unmai therad so bhagwan in the present moment also wants us to seek into the truth of the self and that we had gone into with a short enquiry as to how <clears throat> the now concept even in science is found to be illusory it is not there that really there are no contents in the now <clears throat> so they don't know what is there in the now because they don't enquire into consciousness but the vedanta and the atma vichari he start a teaches and is taught by bhagwan that <clears throat> the self is purna vastu paran rari it is not void is what bhagwan says so that is where we enter the current verse that is the person who is here is enquired into and is eliminated or absorbed in the self the concept of time is enquired into and is absorbed into the self incidentally 
we also discovered that the words purnamadaha purnamidam indicates to us clearly that whatever may be the object of our inquiry if we enquire persistently and deeply and continuously it should lead us to the purna vastu that is how the enquiry into time and place brings us to the self and every other enquiry could be brought down to time and space and taken to the purna vastu the self so we look into the verse for today namanri naale ede naade ede so the the naam here refers to the self the naam in tamil the naam could refer to we it could refer to <coughs> a, a respectful addressing of the self here we can take it that it is referring to the self naam anri naale ede naade ede apart from the self can there be time can there be place of course what is place made of if we enquire into place actually when we know that the longitudes represent time difference and the time is really not <coughs> the same throughout india but we have for convenience approximated it as ist but if you understand that there is a time difference between here and the greenwich mean time then there is a time difference between one po- one spot and the next therefore all these are time and space continuums that both are connected concepts <coughs> if this this horizontal this vertical line of uh, place is taken then it has to get its time reference what is the time that is on which this has been assembled <coughs> because the time at the next space is different uh, we know if it if it is different between here and greenwich mean time it is different between 1 cm and the next also so that is how the we don't enquire into it actually we take it that throughout india it is the same time but <coughs> the enquiry into time along with science need not be really pursued further because bhagwan changes the plane of reference itself to the self namanri naaleedu naadeedu bhagwan says apart from the self can there be time or can there be space nadum ka when we enquire into these things when we enquire into the truth of these things naam udambel naal naattu naam paduvam if we identify with a body <coughs> then we get trapped into time and space so that is where we can spend some time <laughs> in enquiry some enquiry we can make into that that naam udambel naal naattu naam paduvam because the first concept has been made clear right through all the verses that apart from the self can there be knowledge or can there be the duality of knowledge and ignorance can there be the multiplicity of objects can there be the first person second person third person can there be the concepts of past present future apart from the self so the first uh, phrase is clear namanri naaleedu naadeedu can there exist time and space apart from the self nadum <coughs> kal if we enquire into the truth of these things naam udambel or uh, another way of looking at that nadum kal is when we are in the course of uh, enquiry but as in advaita that also gets into the self the earlier way of looking at it is better that no time is attributed to the search 
just the search is referred that nadum kal if we refer if we in, enquire into the truth of these things nam udambel nal natul nam paduvam if we are a body then <clears throat> we get trapped in time and space time and place so how how does that happen so prakasham pillai sir says the moment you are identified with the body there comes a relationship between time and place sadhuvam swamigal explains it even more <coughs> clearly that as soon as we identify with the body we say i was born in november 1962 then the average age of indians is like this <coughs> so i expect to live so much after that i don't expect to live that is the temporal temporal conditioning and then the spatial conditioning the conditioning by place that up to this i am not there from here to here i am there and from here on i am not there from here into the stratospheres i am not there and from my feet down into the core of the earth i am not there but from that to this <coughs> i am there is the body identification what bhagwan says here and what sadhuvam swami clarifies is that the moment i identify with a body <coughs> then i get trapped in time and space nal natul nam paduvam even even when we identify with the atoms like there was a study we had referred to like even if you go for the subtle body we found that the electrons they could live a billion billion times the life the universe has lived so far the universe has lived so far let us say 10 to the power of 14 <coughs> number of years then that could that could live 10 to the power of 28 number of years or a billion billion times Uh, more than the life of the universe so far but even when you identify with those atoms that i am going to be as atomic as that <coughs> even then we get trapped in the cycle of time and space the cycle of pralaya and the formation of the universe we get trapped in that so that is the reference we can take that nam udambel nal natul nam paduvam if if we identify with the body we get trapped in time and space nam udambo the next question that arises is nam udambo are we this body <coughs> nam udambo nam indru andru endrum ondru naadu ingu andu engum ondru who is this i this i is the same nam ondru indru andru endrum ondru that means there is no feeling of difference in the i from the time of knowledge let's say from 67 1967 till today there doesn't seem to be only the body seems to have changed <coughs> the identify with the i identification with the i seems to be the same and we had uh, reduced it to that the ability to grasp the ability to hold on to certain uh, the bodily parts the emotions and memories and uh, the gunas that we have the grasping of that we said that nature of grasping has remained the same the jiva bhava has remained the same and <clears throat> that jiva bhava automatically brings us to temporal and spacious spatial limitations that very uh, need to hold on to a body though that the ability to grasp itself can be said to be the same but that ability brings us and ties us down into <clears throat> the uh, limitations of time and space however that uniformness in the ability to hold of consciousness we can take as a sample as to the 
நேச்சர் ஆஃப் தி செல்ஃப் நாம் இன்று அன்று என்று ஒன்று பகவான் சி வி ஷுட் நாட் ஃபர்கெட் தட் த ரியாலிட்டி ஆஃப் தி செல்ஃப் கேன் நெவர் பி ரிவீல் டு அஸ் சம்திங் வெரி க்ளோஸ் டு தட் கேன் பி இண்டிகேட்டட் சோ தட் வி கெட் அ ஃபீல் ஆஃப் வாட் வில் பி அவர் அனுபவம் this is called that uh, some nakshatra is shown at the time of marriage that arundhati path that arundhati nakshatra is shown it is uh, actually a very uh, small blip in the far away skies so usually they show something nearby let's say in the chaul tree <coughs> there is some branch of the coconut tree which is hanging then the shastrigal may say see that tip of that coconut leaf can you see that then look further and see that that is the arundhati they say that to see the arundhati first something nearby you can see is made to made you are made to see and then your eyes are made to get acclimatized to that far away object similarly the jiva is shown some experience that is near about the experience of the atma anubhava for instance bhagavan uses the example of deep sleep and this is something <coughs> we were asked about in the workshop in madurai uh, that uh, the nature of the waking and the dream what happens to the jiva during waking and dream whether the jiva is the same or jiva is different and what we can say about deep sleep now <clears throat> in deep sleep we all agree as soon as bhagwan says that in deep sleep there was neither the uh, the stula sharira or sukshma sharira for us <clears throat> and still we were there we agree we immediately agree but there are two three dialogues in the talks with sri ramana maharshi where bhagwan himself uh, uh, allows for the existence of jiva in deep sleep the the uh, the one who is a jiva the continuation of the jiva itself not the adhara but the jiva itself in deep sleep he allows allowing for the presence of the uh, dvaita swarga and all those things that <coughs> uh, the idea being that uh, the deep sleep that bhagwan indicates to us is a sample is a nearby experience that we can have it is like the coconut branch the the coconut leaf that is there which is nearby and we can then look at the arundhati like that in deep sleep all the jivas are happy because they are freed of the mind he says but in two or three talks he allows for the continuity of the mind also there <clears throat> that means some some person would have asked about that particular thing and he would say that like in the uh, deepest of forests in the uh, how the moonlight shines through various branches and then falls on the ground like that through maya mode indirectly the jiva experiences the paramatma like that he would have said allowing for the continuation of jiva bhava in deep sleep now similarly here too nam indru andru endru munru is an is an indication of a nearby state to the to that of the self that the jiva always feels the same yesterday today and tomorrow at whatever time now indru andru endru ondru so this has to be taken uh, in this manner that bhagwan is giving us a sample as to the nature of the self just like how in deep sleep also he is giving us a sample as to that there is there is no body there is, there is no mind <coughs> bhagwan says there so that in sadhana we can actually see the blank when we when we go in sadhana and atma vichara when the thought free state is reached with consciousness we actually bring deep sleep here to the waking that is when we know when what bhagwan says that deep sleep is full of consciousness we clearly understand that and 
there to so far as i see a blank is there the jiva bhava continues and <coughs> when that enquiry who sees the blank the i elimin eliminates itself that is where the individuality is gone so there need not be any doubt as to whether the deep sleep which we are experiencing is the actual experience of the self it cannot be it's an indication similarly in this verse to bhagavan uses naam indru andru endrum undru yesterday today and tomorrow the consciousness always feels the same here there everywhere from here we travel to madurai we come back <coughs> in all the places in between in the train journey also there is no difference in the feeling of the i therefore <coughs> uh, if we go back a minute to the previous verse that is 14th verse the tanmai undel munnilai padarkaigal taamulavan the tanmai of course taking the first few verses reference that the whole world exists only if there is a body if there is no body then no world exists we had been uh, seeing that in the first few verses on discrimination or viveka adding on both together when when we see tanmayan unmayai thana and when we are enquiring into the truth of the first person we are enquiring into the truth of whole of space and time because naam udambel nal natul naam padu now in that 14th verses what are we enquiring who am i we are enquiring into the first person then that itself is the enquiry into time and space but where bhagwan is taking us in this verse is to that place where temporal and spatial conditionings are both transcended now naam udambel nal natul naam padu நாம் உடம்போ நாம் இன்று அன்று என்றும் ஒன்று நாடு இங்கு அங்கு எங்கும் ஒன்று இன் விச் எவர் பிளேஸ் வி ஆர் வி ஆல்வேஸ் ஃபீல் தி சேம் ஐ இஸ் வித்இன் நாம் உண்டு நாள் நாடு இல் நாம் தட் இஸ் வி தி செல்ஃப் ஆர் தி டைம் அண்ட் ஸ்பேஸ் வேனிஷ் இன்டு நான் எக்ஸிஸ்டன்ஸ் now this non existence is a great freedom that we have to relish for what it is <coughs> there was someone calling from a girivalam one of my old devotee friends who had come across uh, some some saint who was referring to many of the dark forces in the in in this in this earth that there seems to be many kinds of dark forces which he has referred to and this gentleman was referring that to me that there seem to be lot of negative forces also in the universe that bhagwan what he does <coughs> he makes them all jadam and asat that anything in the triputi or anything in the dyad anything that is having the the duality space or in the space of triad is is not only false or is not only let's say uh, something questionable about it is not only weak it does not exist in the self it is vanquished it is just obliterated so the time and space do not exist in the self that not existing naam undu naal naadil naam sadvam somigal says that can be interpreted the clause can be interpreted as added to naam or added to nadu and naal that is naal nadil naam can be that il can be added to naal and nadu and say that the time and space are not there but the self alone is there or it can be the whole thing can be added to the self itself as a clause and one can say that the self which is transcended time and space alone is that time and space does not exist nal nadil naam means we the self or that consciousness 
which is absolutely free of time and space <coughs> let's go through the verse again namanri naaledu naadedu naadum kaal naam udambel naal naattum naam paduvam naam udambo naam indra endru endrum ondru naadingangu engum ondru naam undu naal naadu naam now what is this naad which has been introduced in this verse and what do scientists see in that let us see for a few minutes there is a whole talk by uh, brian green a scientist about space naad is ultimately space if you if we remove the matter from the naad then it becomes space uh, why i am referring to this particular talk is that slowly scientists are coming towards what vedanta and bhagwan have already made clear it is for our own manana that towards the end of that uh, video the current position of scientists on the space the concept of nad is made clear by him <coughs> that is the concept of space uh, there is a, the introductory part is about newton then uh, einstein and about quantum mechanics quantum physics higgs and all those things are there <clears throat> i am referring to the last part of the video they are also interesting but it is not necessary for us i feel the last part is what is very interesting where they talk about this whole universe what we are seeing in the sensory plane is merely a holographic projection that is the part i am referring to probably the last 10 minutes of that video what bhagwan says that what we are seeing is merely a projection from within what adi shankara says in dakshinamurti stotram that this is darpana drishyamana nagari and this is just <coughs> like in the dream it is inside us but is projected that the whole whole area of time and space is actually inside us but is projected this interestingly they are slowly veering towards that and that part i will cover a little bit so that our own the manana will be clear and that nididhi asana can be deep the uh, manana on this area of time and space if it is clear then the atma vichara can be held quite strongly <coughs> so let let me spend a few minutes on that area with your permission the current standing on scientists is that they are all agreeing mostly they are all agreeing that this is where the uh, theory of the universe could be headed that the whole area starts with study of black holes and they have been studying that what happens when something falls into a black hole we have seen even in the last discussion that black hole has such gravity that even the normal light is absorbed into it the normal light which einstein uses as a standard of 3 lakh kilometers per second which each which is made standard and time and space is made variable by him but that light itself which was made standard for this universe is absorbed into the black hole not very important for us but suppose i drop this book they refer in that video suppose a purse is dropped into the black hole <clears throat> black hole for their purpose for now is a collapsed huge star which has become dark and which has <clears throat> got this huge gravity which absorbs even the light in in simple terms we we come across black holes in our own life when we are deeply depressed <coughs> suppose from morning we are into a mood of depression and we spew that depression on all around us that is where we are a black hole we suck up the good energies of the other people some depression we fall into some thoughts about things not going on and it's all dark energy here and whoever comes whatever they do is not uh, is not having any light for us so whoever comes near us 
they run away because they have to spend all their good energy and be absorbed into us now that is the joke jocular way in which uh, one of the people talking about uh, black holes refers to it's not really a joke i suppose there are black holes in various other <coughs> uh, strata like uh, this is annamaya kosha black holes that they have pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha anandamaya kosha is of course purely <coughs> black if not attended to so uh, that is how one can look at but coming back to the topic about time and space the interesting finding that they are all coming and that is very clear in their last 10 15 minutes of that video in which all scientists agree is that if you put a purse into the black hole then the purse is now uh, it is disintegrated the shape of the purse as an object is disintegrated it cannot remain like that it is somewhere in the space in the black hole but what they have found interestingly is that all the data about whatever is there in the purse to such a minute extent that the entire purse can be reconstructed from that data is present in the surface of the black hole the surface of the black hole is a two dimensional space they say whatever that means in the two dimensional space whatever object goes there the data about it is still present and when the black hole vanishes black hole too has a life now when that vanishes this data remains like that <clears throat> so now from that information they are uh, they are thinking of the possibility that we are all living inside a black hole the whole universe is inside a black hole with the data in the periphery and the light being thrust and shown <clears throat> that all the objects inside the universe are actually a projection from that data present in the periphery of the black hole the periphery of the black hole having all the data the sensory objects including your body my body all the places all the stars are merely a holographic projection it's merely an illusion is the point they are coming to but what is beyond that what is the reality of the space their inquiry does not permit that journey <clears throat> as of yet as of yet it does not permit slowly they are coming where the same scientist graham green organizes uh, seminars where scientists have started enquiring into spirituality through science itself they are coming to enquire into this space of consciousness but that's another story this particular talk if we can limit it to the fact that interestingly this was not necessary interestingly the science has also moved to the place where the whole area of time and place as as we perceive it is 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 a projection <coughs> from uh, from a dark space which we call as vasanas in 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 our vedas that it is the each vasana comes up and the light of consciousness projects the whole world says bhagwan now where is the space that bhagwan is taking us for us to understand it is a whole only a projection because whenever he takes us to the uh, when the first person vanishes the second person and third person vanishes he is taking us to the source of everything <clears throat> so from that place when we understand the projection of vasanas that for whom is this thought we eliminate the first person and eliminate the second and third persons and with the 15th verse we eliminate time <clears throat> with the 16th verse we understand that namanri naled naded apart from the self can there be time and space nadum kal if enquired into <clears throat> namudam vel if we identify with the body nal natul nam paduvam we get trapped in time and space namudambo enquire into the truth about am i this body nam indru andru endru mundru that day today yesterday today and tomorrow they say <coughs> in in the uh, the traditions of christianity there is that one of those songs yesterday today uh, forever god remains the same now that is the transcending of the time now that happens within us practically according to 
பகவான் என் ஆத்ம விசாரம் தி டிரான்ஸ்டிங் ஆஃப் டைம் அண்ட் ஸ்பேஸ் நாம் இன்று அன்று என்றும் ஒன்று நாடு இங்கு வந்து எங்கும் ஒன்று வேற வேற ஐ ஐ ஆம் ஐ ஆம் தி சேம் தெர் இஸ் நோ டிஃபரன்ஸ் ஐ வாஸ் ரெஃபரிங் தேர் தேட் திஸ் குட் பி டேக்கன் அஸ் அ பாயிண்டர் ரதர் தேன் தி ஆக்சுவலிட்டி தி ஆக்சுவலிட்டி ஹஸ் டு பி எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் பை விசாரா நாம் உண்டு நான் நாடு நாம் Uh, we the self alone remain time and space do not exist that was this verse when we add and look these three verses together the about the first person in 14 about time in 15 and about time and place in the 16th verse then where is bhagwan taking us he is taking us to that spot where this whole time and space universe is a projection from within us he is taking us to that place where adi shankara is saying that these are all within us as swapna <coughs> as vasanas and as in dream we see as though it is outside of us we are seeing outside of us here that is when we combine all these three verses we are taken to be ishwara kalpana the uh, what bhagwan tells to uh, kapali shastri that in the enquiry one has to transcend not only one's own ignorance one's own karma one has to transcend the ishwara kalpana itself in atma vichara bhagwan says and how that happens what is the exact step by step approach <coughs> is is now available in these three verses that the first person second person third person enquiry takes us to the source of all people let us say all individuals then the whole of time is transcended then the whole of time and space is transcended then what are this time space and others they are nothing but the projection from within naam unde naal naadi naam so this whole area of time and space and people and things is now absorbed in the self <coughs> that is where when 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 some uh, happening of the passing away of somebody connected with the ashram would happen bhagwan would always refer to many of their good qualities <coughs> many of their uh, good deeds or good good uh, nature and people would wait people would wait to listen to bhagwan the about what he is going to say at the moving on of someone and invariably bhagwan would mention the best in each one of them and those who have come to listen will be surprised that he would find goodness in all the people connected <coughs> who are brought up in enquiry at that time that means what bhagwan is saying is that let the, let the best in in that one have the continuation till time and space is transcended let the best part of that person which that person has identified with see we may not we may not be uh, all of us may not be able to transcend in one day inquiry and we have found that every moment every day some percentage of the body goes away and we are in the same space as the other person who has departed because the body is changing change is the same as birth and death we can say how our enquiry should be the best of our qualities we should meditate we should hold on assimilate what is the best sadhana we are having that is what bhagwan would appreciate isn't it <clears throat> that when somebody moves on bhagwan would always appreciate the best in him that means whatever the best qualities that jiva has gathered in all its journey bhagwan is in one sense reminding to that jiva that this is our good qualities hold on hold it and move on so similarly if we enquire into what is the good quality in us having come to self enquiry <coughs> invariably we can say that the practice of self enquiry itself can be taken to be the good quality we have in us and we should pursue that we should we should put ourselves in the place of somebody who has dropped the body and moved on now what would bhagwan identify that person with whatever is the best in him he would identify and tell so that that jiva can listen 
and continue its sadhana what should bhagwan tell us at this moment if we bring that space to us at this moment <clears throat> that we should hold on to self enquiry and that moment where we transcend time and space should be practiced relentlessly because that is what bhagwan is saying in this verse that if you enquire into who you are who one is then the whole area of time and space which means travel isn't it which means moving so far as we are temporally and spatially conditioned there is always travel there is always movement and the way to cross that is to bring all of time into the now all of the space into here and enquire for whom is this thought of here and now for me who am i that is what these three verses help us transcend the whole area of birth and death the whole area of temporal and spatial conditioning bhagwan helps us to transcend let us hold that with all reverence and practice atma vichara with bhagwan simran's grace let us sit in practice till 8 o'clock where we can have a class summary of the verse again
என்றும் ஒன்று நான் நாம் அன்று இன்று என்றும் ஒன்று that true sameness he says is there even in the jeeva bhava not only in the self so this is the clue this is the link this is the bridge for us which bhagwan says in aksharamana male he gives us this link he says that nyamalir uh, keda am i worse than a dog who can trace his master by the scent so what is the scent of the master the scent of the self which is there even in us bhagwan says in one place he says waking comes and goes i am dream comes and goes i am sleep comes and goes i am so what is it that is common in everything in all our experiences the spatial experiences they are constantly changing the temporal experiences are constantly changing in fact the spatial experiences being linked with time and therefore they are changing in time everything changes and that is of course space and time we have seen are two sides of the same coin space and time are not different from each other because i am here when i say i am here i am here now the next minute i may be somewhere else so it is linked with time space and time are linked with each other and these are the uh the changing experiences for us but what is it that is common in everything it is the sense of being that sense of being which underlies the self so bhagwan in atma vichara nand kumar ji pointed out to us again today he asks us to go to that core which is not changing what is the changing part the changing part is the thoughts the thoughts are linked if we look back at all the verses as he took us back on the journey also we can see that the changing part is linked with time and space the thoughts they are there was a break aka i think you are hello back. i think you yeah, are cut in between there there was a break now you are back aka you can continue hello you can continue hello is it back ah yeah yeah you are back yeah i think because there was a phone to the when the phone comes it gets cut the internet gets yes. cut mm-hmm. on the phone because i am coming from phone so so that every thought if we see thought is time and space whereas if we go back from thought by questioning for whom this thought is we have got out of the realm of time and space very simply bhagwan is giving us the method it is so simple and so sweet of bhagwan that time is such an it's such a vast subject we have seen even in the earlier verse it is so vast and space is so vast nothing we i just went to uh, the planetarium with uh, with my niece and her son and they when you see the space 
it is only of course imagined but it is so vast it is so vast and then they say this is just one part of one galaxy so where is the end to it how can we fathom it and time again we do not know in if we look at hindu mythology we will get ages we will get so many yugas we will get so many types of time and again last time also nand kumar ji said that there is this chronological time there is biological time and time is such such a confusing thing that and it's also funny because i can if i forget like i forget somebody's birthday that person happens to be in usa it doesn't matter if i remember tomorrow i can still wish them today but i can't do it if somebody is in india so this kind of time is is something so totally confusing and it has this in its grip through the thoughts so bhagavan says just enquire just get into the root the i amness if you get into that then then you get out of the grip of time and space and it can it is possible when we recognize with the rise of every thought we have got into time we have got into space because it is based on the again we were reminded it is based on the idea that i am in space tanmay undel that i am here i am this body because this is bound to space so thought rises based on this only all the second person third person all the other thoughts are rising based on this i iness which is bound in space and finally bhagwan says what is this concept of space which we are having if you look at ekanma panchakam he says everything is in the self tannul tanu virukka and we think that we have space we are containing space we are containing time we are containing the self within us so this friend this is absolutely amazing and loving gift bhagwan has given us of self inquiry because ultimately we are we are bothered by time we are bothered so much by time by the grip of time because when anything comes to an end we are afraid we don't want some things to come to an end at all we don't we know we know that everything will come to an end life itself will come to an end because i am just returning from seeing the end of a dear one so we know that end is inevitable but this very fact can be turned in our favor because another relative of that dear one he told me he has gone through many uh, what to say medical emergencies in his life so he sweetly he was saying for me the icu is ashrama and the guru is death he said so many encounters with death i have had icu has been a very nice ashrama for me it has taught me that everything is temporal and everything is temporal and the guru is death so i know that it does not matter nothing matters actually nothing matters but that is a rare rare experience and even then even if we come to a point where we feel death does not matter time does not matter it would still be only from the point of view of being bound to time because i cannot say time does not matter unless i perceive time i cannot say space does not matter unless i perceive space but in the self bhagwan is telling us there is no time there is no space at all it is a transcendent experience so we must understand that we can get there only by diving into the very self we cannot get there even with the best of manana best of manana is good it is excellent because it gives us the strength to dive within but anubhava atma anubhava alone can give us a taste of that give us a taste first and then take us back and establish us over there 
and this is where bhagwan is taking us again and again nand kumar ji also is kind enough to remind us that bhagwan does not stop anywhere less than the final destination he will not allow us to stop anywhere earlier than the final destination so from every angle whether it is from first person second person third person whether it's from past present future whether it is from time and space from every angle bhagwan is again and again hitting the same target so that we don't get carried away in any avenue he doesn't he is not leaving any area untouched or unopened we may get lost in that area no no not like that every area is from every angle bhagwan is taking us back for two reasons one that we should not stray into any unknown area other that whatever experiences we have we can turn that back to self inquiry whether it is an experience in relation to people and objects whether it's relation uh, in experience with me and the world whether it's experience of time and space here we can remember bhagwan's teachings here we can remember bhagwan's teaching in every point bhagwan is there to say yes i am here in the form of self inquiry to take you back to self self abidance such is his abundant grace om namo bhagavate shri ramanaaya namo ramana namo ramana ka namo ramana to